In Luke chapter 6 verse 47, the Bible says, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will liken, I will show you to whom he is like. Verse 48. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation upon a rock. And when the flood came and the stream beat vehemently upon that house, it could not shake it and could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 49. But he that heareth and doeth not what I say is like a man without a foundation built in house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the rain of that house was very great. Psalm, one, Psalm 11 in verse 3. If the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? We'll pray for the blessing on God's word in Jesus name. I will continue on the series we've been on, Wonders Without Number, and I'm going to be talking about through an instruction. So today, we want to talk about accessing the wonders of God through divine instruction. And our major focus today, because tomorrow is Valentine, and I see some of you have gotten red dresses ready. Uh, so before we talk about the red dress, let's make sure that we quarantine ourselves from likely happenings. So I want to look at why marriages and relationships fail and the connection between divine instruction and the stability of marriages, divine instruction, stability, and the instability of marriages. We want to look at all of that by the grace of God. And I've always learned to say that two individuals wanted to build their houses like you find in scripture. And the Bible says one of them decided to dig a little bit deeper. He decided not to build on what he was seeing. The other one built on what he was seeing. And I've always learned to say to those who are single, before you ever build your life on any relationship with an individual, make sure you dig a little bit deep to knowing who the person is. Beyond what you see, people are usually deeper than they appear. People are usually more complicated than they appear to be. So it's important that you learn to dig deep. So what causes relationships to fail? What causes marriages to end up in divorce? Is there a peculiarity about the people that are in certain relationships that makes their relationships to fail? Is there some peculiarities about certain individuals in a marriage that makes their marriages to fail? We started looking at some of the reasons why such things happen today. And one of it is the fact that when you have an unwise person in a relationship, the relationship would fail. The relationship will be unstable. The relationship will be filled with crisis. So number one reason why relationships end up in crisis, the reason why marriages end up in divorces is because of the presence of one or two unwise people in a relationship. I want to look at that carefully. In the book of Proverbs chapter 20 verse 3, the Bible says it is one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Every fool is what? So how do you know a fool? Huh? Likes to quarrel. And I love what Pastor Aaron said. He said I was among those people before. I like to quarrel. And he took us to his own story. How blackberry curve versus gold created quarrel in a house. And only God knows what creates troubles in our own homes today. It may be blackberry straight, blackberry united, you know. Please look at the scripture and we're going to read it together. The Bible says, it is to a man's honor. The proof that you are an honorable man is that you do what? Talk to me, you do what? You avoid anything that can trigger strife. And the proof that you are, please, not anybody here, some people outside. The proof that somebody is a fool is noted by what? The person is what? Quick to do what, man? Quick to quarrel. The environment is calm, but you're uncomfortable because it's too quiet. 
you thrive in an atmosphere of strife when quarrel is in the atmosphere when we are not talking together you are comfortable you are more relaxed when the marriage is tensed. It is a proof of foolishness. It is a proof that you are an unwise person. Like the scripture has put it. I mentioned in the first service the words of Plato. Who said wise men speak because they have something to say. But fools speak because they must say something. It is a proof of foolishness when your words lack discretion. <laughs> one of the worst thing, I, I don't know about you, one of the worst thing anybody can be bedeviled with is when you have, let me use common language, when you have running stomach. What's the English word for that? Medical. Huh? You call that diarrhea, right? Do you know what it means to have diarrhea? I mean, real serious diarrhea. I don't want to take you into a very gory story. This happened in Donia Air Show, Kaduna. We were right at the field. And boom, diarrhea came. No toilet close by. Hallelujah. okay have you met people whose mouth is having diarrhea huh? your mouth is running commentary without break you're having mouth diarrhea diarrhea just 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 talking just talking now if a man wants to marry you and he notices you are having that kind of challenge, he won't. If a woman wants to marry, she will not. And if you're married to someone, you'll frustrate the person. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 11. A fool will allow his spirit man to have a vent. He will give full vent to his spirit but a wise man will hold it back. The proof of wisdom is restraint. Write that down. The proof of wisdom is restraint. The ability to say no to how I feel is a proof of wisdom. In Proverbs chapter 14 verse 1, every wise woman builds a house, but the fool tears it down. The fool does what? So how do you know a foolish woman? She tears down her marriage, tears down her relationship. The word fool, like I said to them in the first service, the word fool is the Hebrew word nabal. N-A-B-A-L. It is the Hebrew word nabal. Nabal. Anyhow you want to pronounce it. Now the funny thing about the word nabal or nabal, the husband of Abigail, is that remember he was a fool right she was a wise one see marriages where one person is wise the other one is a fool will be unstable marriages where both are fools will eventually break down it is a burden for a wise man to be married to a foolish woman it is a greater burden for a wise woman to be married to a foolish man it's a greater burden Sometimes God may have to come to the rescue of the woman by eliminating the man. Like he did in the case of Nabal. When God saw that a wise woman was carrying a foolish man as a head, God eliminated him. Foolishness is a burden. And I was able to share with you how that the word fool, a fool or foolishness, simply means an individual... Who is dangerously committed to living ignorantly? A fool is an individual who is dangerously committed to living what? Ignorantly. I am passionately committed to making sure I don't know. I don't want to know. Take this book 
Five love language. What happened? What's it all about? So that you can learn how to love language. What is love language? You should not understand my language. <laughs> so, so how about this book on five money personality? What does that mean? What's that all about? All this uh, stuff. The people that wrote the book, don't they have their own trouble? So how about attending anger management course? Doesn't everybody have anger? How about getting a mentor? For what? Don't they also have their problem? They, I'm talking about people who are dangerously committed to living ignorantly. And they are passionately dedicated to senselessness. It is a hallmark of foolishness. And when you are passionately dedicated to senselessness, nothing makes sense. Your relationship will make sense. <laughs> you can't have this stable relationship with someone who is passionately dedicated to senseless living. I did mention in the first service that there are five kinds of fools. And depending on the kind of fool you are connected to, it will determine the gravity of instability you face. There are those who are simple fools. So, simple fools, your problem may not be too much with them, but you have a problem. Then there are those who are silly fools. They are all in the scripture. Everything I'm sharing, just that we don't have time. There are silly fools. Then there are sensual fools. Then the Bible calls some people scorning fools. The ones that are very serious are steadfast fools. They are steadfastly foolish. They are just, they are, as it was, so it is, so shall it be, world without any fool. <laughs> was a fool 1980? 1985 was still a fool. 1995, the foolishness has moved to another level. By the turn of 2015, the foolishness had become a matured one. January 2022, we saw the foolishness saying Happy New Year height of it all you cannot have a productive marriage with a fool it's a burden Proverbs chapter 4 is the solution wisdom is the principal thing with all you're getting get what get understanding second reason why marriages are unstable and relationships break down is because one person is connected to someone who is unproductive or both parties are unproductive when you have an unproductive person as a partner your relationship will suffer greatly in Proverbs chapter 20 verse 4 it says the slogger does not plow in the autumn he will seek at harvest and nothing shall be given to him there are people when it's time to walk, they will not walk. I love confession. Anyone who confesses scripture without action committed to it is a very clear manifestation of a fool. Declaring God's word for abundance with no commitment to walk is the highest demonstration of foolishness. Because faith without works is what? The slow God will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore, he shall beg when it is what? Time of harvest. It's too cold. It's too cold. Ah, let me sleep. It's too cold. A little sleep. A little slumber. A little folding of the hand. So shall thy poverty come like what? An armed man. <laughs> when a matured man no money in bank account wakes up and is watching movie on Monday. The children should quickly report him to IRS or social service. I don't know what they should report their father to. First of course, because that kind of a man is a burden of irresponsibility to his children. It's a bad role model. That children will wake up every day and watch you as a father. Doing nothing. Asking their mom, what does that do for a living? That's the latest one happening, sir. 
Women are calling me saying, Pastor Sam, my children are asking me, what does my husband do for a living? And women are trying to cover their father. The your husband is walking, mommy, what does he do? He's walking where? <laughs> you know children? They will say, well, mommy, take us. <laughs> Sweetheart, I know you love him. You see, there's so many nice girls in Abuja here. Girls that will marry a guy, house the guy, feed the guy, they will wed the guy. They will buy a ring he will give them. They will give to the guy. Talk to me. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Do you understand what I'm saying? Is it happening in this city or not? Hey, why are you behaving like you don't know what I'm talking about? If you're in this church, if we catch you, we will break your wedding. We will, I will break it. I will stand and I will say in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we declare this union broken before it's established. How shameless can you be that you will be the one that buy wedding suit for him to marry you? You then put your dowry inside envelope for him to give your parents. Then you buy his wedding ring and buy your own wedding ring. Even if it is only copper, let him buy copper. If he doesn't have copper, let him burn iron. Let him use his hand to get metal and bend it. It's a proof of his commitment. And give it to you. Look at your neighbor and say, you're angry, Abby. I know you. Look at your, there's an angry person already. I've not started. We're just warming up. You will, you will ask yourself, what made you enter this church today? <laughs> huh? Marry him into your house. Reversing the Bible. Did you hear that uh, Isaac went to Rebecca's house? Did you hear that uh, Rachel went to the, Jacob? Jacob was in the house of her. He worked for the woman. He worked for her. He says, sir, I will not take your daughter free of charge. But Sunday, I won't take her free of charge. Let me work for it. Let me do what, sir? I'm a man with honor. Let me work for this. Let me serve your pigs. Let me drive your car. What is the what of your daughter? Rather than her give me money to wed her. And I don't know what kind of desperation you are into, my sister. That will make you do such a thing. Because ultimately you will regret it. Pastor is a nice guy. We've met too many. Right here in the city of Abuja. We've seen too many of them. Because poverty creates forced humility. Are you getting what I'm saying? A broke guy has no choice. That Humility is a compulsory virtue for a broke guy. What other virtue must he demonstrate? Are you hearing me? The only thing a guy has when he's broke must be humility. You don't have that one, you are finished. Why shouldn't a guy open the door of a car for you when he has no money? That is a job. Because he's jobless. I am. Does that mean a man who has job should not open the door of a car? But I'm saying to you here, make sure the man that has a job Make sure the person opening your car has a job. If the one opening the car, the door, doesn't have a job, it's because he has no job. And don't think he will be opening it for life because when Pepe rests, when crypto enter hand, when Bitcoin come, then you shall see the Son of Man in his glory. I'm telling you, you shall see the Son of Man in His glory, and all the world will be amazed. Eh? We don't know this about you, no, a day inside. Pastor, money has changed my husband. Who told you? Money never changes anybody, it reveals people. When you marry a Nabal, money will soon reveal him. You will carry Nabal to first class. A, a Nabal will mess you up in first class. A fool will be sitting on the first class. I will show everybody what kind of a fool you have. You carry him to your house. 
You married him. But Pastor Sam, I've been exposed to a certain standard of living. So, and I know that he was just starting his life. He was, he was living in... Um, see, why your finger is moving more than your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was okay. Don't stop wiggling. You know, Pastor Sam, he lives in um, um, what's yeah, yeah, he, he lives in yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Pastor, you know, when I went there, there wasn't even a way to. The <laughs> Suddenly, this guy found this rhythm. <laughs> you know, Pastor, I couldn't find a way to his house. So it was a kind of a shanty. That's where your husband lived. That's where you're heading to. He lay in here. That's your house. <laughs> Pastor, what happens to my house where you put it on rent? There's English. You had the word rent before? You rent, <laughs> you rent the house. You, you give it over to people that are into Airbnb. They turn it to a short lit apartment. And you're making money from it monthly. And you follow your husband to his manger. In Yaya. You know. <laughs> Pastor, where he, he, he only just has a stove. But you know, I use gas cooker. You will use firewood. Fire what? And the Lord brought Eve to Adam. He brought her to a garden. Sir, they had no walls. They had no zinc. But she said, if this is my husband, I will dwell where he dwells. Rebecca was coming and she said, where's my husband? She saw a guy sitting on the field. And she said, who is that guy? They said, that's your husband. She said, look, I have to come down. Simple wisdom teaches me now that I don't approach him. I've accepted to marry him. And I can't be sitting on my donkey and have him rise to my level. I come down to the level of my husband. It is the burden of marriage. It is the burden of marriage. You come down to the level of the one you seek to marry. That is part of the price that you pay. It's part of the price. Come down. I'm not quoting personal preferences or experiences. I'm quoting God's word to you. And you can't get it right if you negate scriptures. It will break you badly. Marry, marry a productive man. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 19. Whosoever walks his land will have plenty of bread. But he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. Worthless pursuits carry bag wake up in the morning instead of looking for where you will make predictably go carry block drive uber it's an honest it's a great job there's nothing wrong with using your car to do uber than driving around town only to come back home and say sweetheart hey, the contract is coming it's coming the contract is it's coming so he said, I will change your life. <laughs> see, hey, you say your father's house, how much will it cost totally to pull it down? I bring because, see, I'll pull it down in one day, three days, I'll raise it up. Your father's house, like, how would you see? <laughs> it's coming. They just said, uh, Palmsec have to sign something there from Palmsec. It will immediately from there, to, everything will move to procurement. Procurement will quickly move to. Nigeria civil service it will quickly move. It's Nigeria civil service that says it will quickly move. <laughs> huh? And you know, sweetheart, the money will come like that, and I will change it. Uh, it's oil deal. Oil the only thing we hear you talking about is oil deal. We're going to sell oil. We're lifting crude. We're selling gold. Diamond. The buyers are coming from China. We are planning to meet in Zamfara. 
You've been on this for three years. No source of income, sweetheart. Don't worry. Keep spending the sweetheart. You take it, cover up. You know where my money come. My wife and I know somebody like that several years ago in our church. Pastor Sunday may know the person. I had to rebuke him one day because the wife had to come and challenge me. Elderly man, very elderly. Sir, three years he's coming. Oil deal. Pastor, the people to the buyers are coming to meet with the sellers. The LPO is moving to move with the POS, you know, like. <laughs> Sir, every day PLPO is moving. Something is cooking. <laughs> One day the wife came, the wife was carrying the burden of the children, funding the entire school. One day she said, Pastor, I will leave him. Yes, sir. She said, Pastor, I'm tired and I will leave this man. And I called him. I said, Daddy, what is going on? He said, No, Pastor, don't. I've been telling her to be patient. I said, Daddy, for how long? He said, it's just about six years. He said, you know this thing, it takes time to come. I said, sir, if it has not come in six years, who guarantees that it will come in another six years? I said, sir, why is you are waiting for this thing to come? Is there nothing else you can be doing that brings in predictable income? Women are not looking for too much. Women are just looking for something predictable. Even if it's 10,000 naira. Stop speaking all this. Uh, they are bringing this on the ice ship. I'm going to high sea. Is it ice ship or ice sea? I'm selling weapons to the Nigerian military. You. <laughs> I'm bringing a helicopter. I'm coming speaking to the company. They are bringing it. I'm seeing the chief of army staff. Thank you guys. I, you think it's, uh, that's how they do it? Don't worry, everything they like my proposal. You see, we it's proposal you will buy here. Be productive, and to be a productive man means you have predictable income. Predictable income. Walk your land, walk your gift, walk your business. Be in the place of your assignment. Give your all to what you believe in, to what your assignment is. And make sure it brings in predictable income. In relationship, nobody has everlasting patience. And don't stretch anybody. Don't. To be productive means to be profitable, to be engaged, to be fruitful. To be unproductive means to be unprofitable, to be unengaged, and to be unfruitful. Nobody will want to marry or stay happily married with an unproductive person. Otherwise, after a while, the unproductive person will become a liability to you because you are an asset to the marriage. And it has been proven that if one party keeps giving to a relationship over time, the party that keeps receiving will think that you are benefiting. The party that keeps giving will eventually become burdened. And after a while, the person will not be able to continue to give. Let me take it to a little bit of a higher level. I have noted that most unproductive people are usually very poor. Most unproductive people are also very lazy. They are usually borrowers. They are procrastinators. Tomorrow. Next tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. Next week. Do it now. No. Papa, don't worry. Yes, we still have time. We still have time. January is over. We still have time. So most unproductive people are procrastinators. They are highly pessimistic. What if it doesn't work? What if it does work? The solution to this is to make sure you start early and finish well. Whoever is slothful will not roast his game. But the diligent man will, have a pres will get precious wealth. Proverbs chapter 12 verse 27. This was one of the major problems with the man you call Esau. See, it's one thing to go catch your game. It's another thing to roast it. My wife said something to me. She was like, ah, what's causing this uh, fuel crisis again that we're having? I said, well, you will keep having it. I said, because we're a country that produce crude but will not refine it. So we are paying so much 
to bring in what we sent out. The question is, is it that we are bewitched? Okay, well, no, sorry. The refineries, is it that the machines, they don't work in Africa? Like if you bring them to Africa, is it that they won't work? Or Africa is not suitable for refine, refining? I thought we have done this before. What exactly is the narrative behind all of this? I was at LNG. I, you know, I had to go and speak there recently. And I was asking them. I said, sorry, what, why is there a problem with gas? And the person who is there, one of the senior guys, a pastor, our case in this country is a mystery. It's a mystery. Number three. Write this down. I'm going to quickly move on to some things. One of the major reasons for breakups and divorce is what I call division. Division. It was J.K. Rawlings who once said, we are only as strong as we are united. As weak as we are divided. We are only as strong as we are united. As weak as we are divided. Divided. Unity is strength. Division is weakness. In Mark chapter 3 verse 25, Jesus said, If a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. Competitiveness and self-centeredness drives what we call division. When we compete with each other. Secret competition. When the husband is pursuing masters, the woman is pursuing masters, then the husband is telling the woman, sorry, wait, I have to move. Competition in a family. Self-centeredness. I wish I can talk about that. It creates division in a family. Somebody once said that when spiders unite, they can tie down a lion. When spiders as weak as they are, when they unite, they can tie down a lion. But when there is division in a house, all kinds of things will happen. Psalm 133 tells us that the blessing lies in the place of what? Unity. The blessing lies in the place of unity. Let me touch a little bit on self-centeredness. To be self-centered is to be self-absorbed. It's to be self-focused. Insensitive to the need of the person you are in relationship with. Self-centered people are only concerned and obsessed with their own ambitions, their own desires, their own goals, their own needs, and their own interests. It's all about my own. And you cannot keep a relationship where you are self-centered. When it's all about you, when it's about me, I, and just mine, you negate the loss of relationships. I realize that self-centeredness is one of the most unappealing personality traits to be desired in a potential friend. Nobody wants to stay around somebody who is self-centered, self-absorbed. It makes up that to become tools and objects that you use to your own advantage. You don't care about them. It's all about yourself. And once you get used, you get them used, you dump them. Self-centered individuals are the one who causes, who have some of these major problems in their lives. Listen, there's a problem with self-centeredness. When you become a self-centered person, you predispose yourself to the following. Number one, you predispose yourself to mental health illnesses. You predispose yourself to addictions, personality disorders, anxieties. You predispose yourself to depression. Because you are self-absorbed. It's all about you. The Bible says something in Philippians chapter 4 verse 3 to 4. The Passion Translation. It said, abandon every display of selfishness. Abandon it. Abandon every display of selfishness. Possess a greater concern for what matters to others instead of your own interest. Does that mean you don't have self-care? There's a difference between self-care and self-centeredness. You can be concerned about yourself 
without necessarily becoming an unhealthy person when it comes to being concerned about others or being concerned over others. <laughs> so self-centeredness destroys relationship. This is my car, my house, my this. It's all about me. It's all about what's comfortable for me. And I don't care about what happens to my wife, what happens to my friends, what happens to those, those persons around me. It destroys relationship. I'll give you one more if I can. Stubbornness. Okay. Somebody should know somebody who was very stubborn in relationship. I'm not sure you know anybody like that, but I've, I've stayed around people like that. I, I grew up in such environment. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 1. The Passion Translation. Stubborn people who repeatedly refuse to accept correction will suddenly be broken and never recover. So you can see one of the characteristics of a stubborn person. What is it? Say it again. What's one characteristic of a stubborn person? Never does what? Huh? Accept correction. Stubborn people who repeatedly refuse to accept correction will be broken and never recover. Stubbornness is that strong determination not to change your attitude your behavior direction or your position i'm heading this way nothing will change me this is the way i am this is the way i look at things stubbornness nobody wants to hang around with a stubborn partner nobody nobody I love the words of C.S. Lewis. He once said that there is nothing progressive about being a pig-headed and being pig-headed and refusing to admit a mistake. I'm going to say that again. He said there is nothing progressive about being pig-headed and refusing to accept a mistake. Pig to be pig-headed means you are stubborn. And one of the hallmarks of a pig-headed person is that you don't accept mistakes. Stubbornness. Not accepting correction. Not accepting you made a mistake. It destroys relation stubbornness thank you one of the things that i found out, thank you guys one of the things that i found out about stubbornness is that stubborn individuals will always learn the hard way stubborn individuals always do what learn the hard way yeah you're stubborn you're gonna learn the hard way If you're not going to learn by simple corrections and all of that, then something is going to make you learn. And it's going to be very hard. Anybody remember Jonah? Jonah was not just stubborn to human beings. He was even stubborn to God. To God. God said, Jonah, rise up, go to Nineveh. It was very clear. The instruction was clear. Nineveh. Like, stand up, go to Nasarawa. Nasarawa is very clear. You know the direction to Nasarawa. You go through Yaya. And then you get down straight... And, and you're not sedated. You're not under the influence of any drug. And you get up and you call an Uber driver. You say, please, can you take me to Lokoja? <laughs> and you're so clear. You know, you know you are wrongly, you are wrongly positioned. And you are still determined to go in that direction. Stubbornness. Stubbornness destroys relationships. Stubbornness destroys relationships. I'll close with this. Abusiveness. Stubbornness. Abusiveness. In Psalm 35, 37 verse 35, the Bible says, I've seen a wicked, violent, I've seen a wicked, violent man spreading himself like a luxurious tree, luxuriant tree in its native soil. Talking about an abusive man. The consistent act of using harsh, critical, demeaning, angry, and insulting words on your partner without, with or without physical, mental, or sexual harm. So it means, listen, the use of harsh, insensitive, abusive words, whether there is physical harm or no physical harm, sexual harm or not, it's called abuse. 
I never forget when a man looked at his wife and said, you look like a toad. She was pregnant. The wife was pregnant, sir. Carrying his baby. And the man looked at his wife and he said, you look like a toad. I went from there to go and render service in the house of God. They were going to church. Looked at his wife and said, hi. You look like a toad. If two of them are one, like the Bible says, sir, <laughs> I mean, such such abusive words. Somebody looked at his wife. See, see where you are walking inside the house. You look like an hippo. I'm telling you. What I hear in my counseling center. You are telling me, Pele. <laughs> so what I hear. What people say to each other. What people do to each other. First, it's not the hallmark of Christianity. If we are children of God, such should not be found in our midst. Emotional abuse should not be part of our lives. Verbal abuse should not be part of our lives. Financial abuse should not be part of our lives. Sexual abuse should not be part of our lives. Abusiveness will destroy your marriage. Day in and out, we see people saying, I'm done with the marriage. I'm done. I'm going. And like I said to you, those of, those of you that want to go to London, Canada, and all of that, resolve issues now before you travel. Resolve it. Because it's the latest one we're seeing now among young Nigerians who have traveled abroad with kids. It's happening all over. The funny part of it is that they will break away from each other and stay in the same province. So it's just that we are, you are in Guadimpa, I am in Lugwe, but we are in the city. But the marriage is over. And they are calling Pastor Sam. One of them just called me recently. A medical doctor said, Pastor Sam, I regret. They've just moved two years. Say, Pastor Sam, I regret ever moving. She said, Pastor Sam, I came here and I saw it happening to my mates. I saw it happening to other young couples. And I said, may this thing never happen to me. Say, Pastor Sam, I never knew that a few months after I will be the next. And who is she dealing with? She's also dealing with a pastor. Who got there? And began to see his wife rise and he had not found his rhythm yet that's where the trouble begins and all of a sudden in that environment this is a patriarchal environment right nigeria is a patriarchal environment whether you like it or not as a woman if you want to misbehave to your husband you the environment will tell you behave I mean, it's difficult to take a case to the court against a man, except where God puts the right person there. It's difficult to take a case against a man to the court and win. It's a man's world in this part of the world. So our men then get over to the other side of the world, to somewhere like Canada, and they get a baptism of surprise. I gave you a practical example. The guy normally slaps his wife. We normally resolve issues here in Abuja. He will slap her. When she comes to pastor, he slap me again. I'll call him and say, what happened? He says, sorry, pastor, I just shove her. I just shove her. I say, give me an example of what shoving means. He's just like, pastor, just like this. <laughs> she moved to Canada. He also moved. And carried, he, did, he did not deprogram himself here. <laughs> he carried shove <shovel> there. <laughs> and what did I just got a call? <laughs> he call? They gave him phone to call me from prison. From <laughs> from. <laughs> he said, Pastor. I said, Yes. He said, she has done the unthinkable. I said, what happened? He said, sir, 
I'm speaking to you from cell or whatever they call. I said, what happened? How did you land there? He said, ah, pastor, she has damaged my record. She has damaged. I said, what happened? He said, sir, it was just, she was just talking and I was telling her to keep quiet. The way you know, you know how she talked. I said, I know her very well. She's like, no, I respect the fact that she is gifted to do that one. I know what she can do. So, but what you can do is what we don't know. So, he said, Pastor. And I said, Pastor, it was not something I just, again, he forgot I'm um, part of the history. He said, Pastor, I just, just hit her mouth. Just, I was also literally trying to tell her mouth to shut up. He said, Pastor, the next thing I saw, 20 police cars. 20. And they handcuff him. He said, Pastor, me. Handcuff, I left my hand. He's a very gentleman now. Because she came, I had to call her, spoke with her, so she had to go to the cell, she talked with them, so they had to release him, and all of that. So we had to start working on the marriage, and uh, to the glory of God, but the part of their rules is that he must, he's a risk, he, what do you call it, high mm -hmm. So for the first time, they gave him a name in his life, you're a high risk fellow. So, and part of the rule is that you must stay far, so for almost a year, he stayed far away, and to see her, there were certain rules. I said, how are you doing? He said, Pastor, I'm fine. He said, she'll be coming to visit me in my province. So they had to keep him out of the province. But they are together now. And they are getting on well together. And I know that it doesn't matter what comes from his village. I'm, I'm telling you. Any spirit. See, so all this thing we're talking about deliverance. The pastor, you know, I need deliverance. Of You've not found yourself in a very highly regulated environment. You'll be delivered by the environment. <laughs> when you find yourself in cell, and you say, how did I get here? Whatever brought you there next time, you want to show somebody? You remember the cell? You will show yourself. For marriages to work, we must become Christian-like. For relationships to work, there's so much to share. We must become Christian-like. We must begin to manifest what the Bible simply calls the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22. 21 to 22. The, the fruit of the Spirit are manifest, which are this. The Bible began to make us understand what the fruit of the Spirit are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. The Bible says, against such there is no law. Against such there is no law. So my challenge to us today, as we leave this place, is to begin to ask ourselves, how much of Christ do we allow to find expressions through our lives? I wish I can talk to you about patterns, how they destroy relationships. Study where you came from. What destroyed their marriages? What broke down their marriages? What destroyed their relationships? Study where you came from. The problem with history is that if we don't study them properly and avoid them, we repeat them. It's called patterns. I watched my father slap my mother. I watched my father beat my mom. I saw it happen in the barracks. We wake up every day to the cry of women from the next neighboring house. It they beat me, oh, it they beat me, oh. I hear those things. And you see a woman run naked out of the house. He won't kill me, won't kill me. We grew up in those kind of environments. And I said to myself, I said, until the Lord calls me home, not for a day will I ever have to lift up my hands to touch my wife. It's never been done in the last 20 years when I had the reasons to do them because <laughs> daddy 20 years ago within the first six months not shoving this is shovel it was supposed to be my wife 20 years ago first six months 
she one day looked at me, she said, thank God you are the one I married. I said, why? She said, I know I will not have stayed three months in marriage. I said, you know what you showed me, Abby? The first three months. There were reasons. I would have slapped and I thought, perhaps, so I just would have said, you did well. You did well. For those <laughs> particularly bad angels. They would be like, you did well. But in the midst of it all, even though there was a justification to do that, I was concerned about posterity. I was concerned about what? I was aware of the fact that if I do that, I was going to open up a battle line that my sons will have to deal with. I know. Number two, I had every opportunity at the very early start of our marriage, sexually, we had some issues to deal with. So I had every opportunity at a very tender age. I'm a student of mercy and grace. I understand the grace of God, the mercy of God. I know that there was a man called David and he knew how to tie the hand of God. So I'm a student of theology. So I can appeal to the mercy of God to overrule whatever I've done in the past. So I had opportunity also. In fact, at some point, my wife created some situation that would have become a legal reason for me to commit fornication and blame her for what she did. But again, Jesus said something. He said, for your sake, I sanctify myself. He said, because of you, I sanctified myself. I look at my children, yet unborn. I said, I will not open a line of compromise. I had every opportunity to beat her. I'm not sure if I would have been able to beat her because I think she would have beat me too. So, <laughs> because, because you see, some of us men, we over, overestimate ourselves. There are some of these women, one punch. You don't know the bone density they have. You're not looking at them. They hit you in a very strategic location. You wake up. You say, where, where am I? Where am I? Like? <laughs> we had all the opportunities to do that. But if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things have become new. So today I can look at David, my son, and say, son, don't do that. Trust my children. My daughter will ask you, daddy, are you sure you didn't do that in your time? So I challenge everybody here today. Ladies, it's time for us to become Christ-like in our lives. Walk away from attitude that doesn't depict Christian living. Same thing with those of us who are men. Otherwise, having a solid relationship that works will become a mirage to many of us. I'd like you to stand to your feet very quickly. <laughs>